Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, my name is David Thorne. Uh, today in this video I'm going to show you how to run a MySQL server with inside Docker uh, on a Ubuntu um, on a Ubuntu machine um, using persisted data. Um, what does persisted data mean? Well that means that when you stop or shut down the container, uh, the MySQL server, then next time when you uh, run it again, all of the data is still going to be there. Um, whereas if you don't do it this way, every single time you start and stop this one container, uh, potentially all of the data is going to be lost. With that said, uh, let's get started. So as I said, we're on a, a Ubuntu machine uh, right now and you can see that the docker version I'm using is 24.0.6 and uh, I've for the sake of uh, speed I've downloaded or pulled should we say so I've, I've run uh, docker pull mysql 8.1 uh, uh, image already and uh, that's the one we're going to be using it's the latest version uh, that they actually have and I've got no containers running uh, so far so before we uh, go on to create uh, any containers and so on let's just have a quick look at um, the docker volume uh, command and uh, just to see what it has so here docker volume command we have then create inspect uh, ls or list volumes prune and remove now the ones we're going to look at right now is just create uh, and inspect well we can use ls as well so let's go ahead and just create a volume just for the sake of uh, using the inspect and so on first of all just to get an understanding of what a docker volume command does because this is really important the rest of the the commands that we're going to do really are you may have seen in other videos and so on but this is the key part of this one video is using the docker volume command so let's just create a uh, a test uh, volume that's now done and we can then say docker volume and ls and we now can see we've got a driver of local and a volume name of test we're not going to worry about the driver today we're just going to leave it as it is because it's really not important for this one video so uh, we're now going to say docker volume inspect and we're going to give the name of the volume that we want to have a look at and you can see here it tells us when it was created which was just a second ago what type of driver null the labels we're not going to get into the mount point is something that's with inside of um, docker that's dealing with this it itself um, but we can have a look um, in here just for the sake of it and you can see that we've got this one test this one test uh, volume as well and you can see it's got data but this is of no interest to us honestly right now Okay, so let's let's go ahead and uh, remove that one uh, volume, and let's uh, start with actually doing it with MySQL. All right, so what we're going to need is some area where we can save all of the uh, var lib MySQL data that's stored with inside of a MySQL container. So let's go ahead and say uh, volume create, and we're just going to say uh, MySQL. Uh, volume here this is the volume that we're going to be using and just as we did a second ago let's now say uh, inspect and then mysql uh, volume and we can see uh, where it is that we've got this one one data here all right and so we just know we've got mysql volume that's what we want to use so now next we want to run our um, our actual mysql server um, but we want to attach this one volume uh, to make sure it persists to this one this one folder as such so we're going to run a, a mysql server in the background using the dash, the flag uh, dash d and next uh, we want to give it some environment variables to make sure it knows uh, what user uh, passwords and so on there are and the first one we want to do is then the root password i'm just going to set it to one two three four one two three four five six and the next one will, will be then the actual uh, password of the user and the user that we're going to create is um, then David and then the, the MySQL uh, database for David that we're going to create we're just going to call it David underscore uh, DB now this is the important part of the one video here we're just going to declare our volume name all right and Docker knows this one's a volume, so you don't have to do any other magic stuff. You literally just have to put the name of your volume there, and then a colon, and then we're going to say where it's going to mount to. And with inside the container, we want to mount it to then var lib mysql. And this is super important that you get this right. So everything with inside of this one folder, when the um, mysql server starts, is going to map it and basically store all of that data with inside of this one volume itself. 
okay and so we're then going to say we're going to put it on uh, port 3306 and we're going to map that to port 3306 uh, also and now uh, finally we just want to say we're going to use the mysql uh, 8.1 uh, image that we've pulled already with that said this should now be all perfectly fine so we've got the environment variables that we need and we've got the user we've got the database we've got the volume that we know is empty and it's going to map to this and we're told it which ports to use so let's go ahead and run this and see whether it works and let's do docker ps to see that it's still up and running and it is let's just run it again just to make sure it is up and running so we're happy okay and we can see that it's mapped to the correct ports and so on the only thing we didn't give it was a, a very very good name so let's just go ahead and and dump this as well because i forgot to give it a, a name and uh so let's just cancel out this and we're then just going to come here i'm sorry i forgot to do this and we want to do dash dash name and we're just going to call it mysql and we're also going to say host name is going to be then mysql uh, local or we'll just call it uh let's just call it db1 all right and we'll just say mysql here and we'll, we'll start it again and now we can see that we've got um, our mysql server running on the correct ports and we can now come in here and say docker execute it so we want to have an interactive shell and we're going to say mysql and then we're just going to say bash and now uh, we're in our one container and we can now see which version we're running okay it's not going to allow that which is fine so we're going to say then user is uh, david and then dash p for the password and we can access our uh, mysql server and if we then do uh, the root uh, one two three four five six and we're in here so let's just do show databases this is the key part right we can see that we've got david db and we've got uh, mysql and performance and sys okay and now if we just say create a database and we're going to say david uh, db uh, one and we're just going to exit out of this and exit out this again and the key part here is that if i stop the 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 um if I stop the container right now um, and we just say just kill it literally just kill this one one uh, container here and uh, just do force so now we've got no containers running whatsoever and we just run our command uh, once again and we go back into our uh, mysql uh, container and we go mysql user and then p two three four five six and we show databases once again and now you can see that it's actually persisted all of the changes that have been made and this is the key part here right is that if we come back out again and uh, we remove this one volume and uh, we remove this one volume here and we run it again oh we need to uh, remove it here and the volume has been removed and we look again it's still here so we can say docker execute docker execute it mysql uh, bash and then say mysql and you whoops user root p one two three four five six show databases and now you can see it's it's only there um and this this just goes to show you that no matter how many times we we start or stop or whatever this this is only ever gonna this is never gonna persist the data that's basically the the long story short there um yeah there we go so this is it's as easy as that uh, but if we now look at our uh, volume here we can see that we've got this is the one volume that we told mysql to use and this is the other volume so let's just have a look what's um, uh, in this if we just say docker volume inspect on this one and you can see here um, where it's located and let's have a look at in this uh, this one uh, folder and we can see here this is all the mysql information uh, that's there david underscore db now if we um, come back and inspect the uh, let's just do docker volume list whoops docker uh, volume uh, list once again now let's inspect uh, our other volume and uh, we can see where uh, this one is so let's now look at the contents of this one directory 
and you can see where uh, David underscore uh, DB1 uh, is. All right. So this is basically what volumes do and how you can persist the data. All of the data uh, in the uh, from Docker has been saved because you haven't you haven't told it yet uh, to prune. If we say Docker volume, uh, then prune, it will go ahead and delete. Um, it will go ahead and delete any volumes that are not being used right now. So if we now say that we're going to delete this uh, one Docker container, and we now run uh, Docker PSA, which just means there's nothing running, and now we say uh, Docker volume prune and run this once again, and now we do Docker volume ls, you can now see that our our volume, our custom volume that we created ourselves is still there. So Docker knows whether it created itself or whether we created it. And so it's going to use them differently. Even though MySQL underscore volume is not being used right now, it knows that we created it. Um, so it's not going to delete it. Um, so this is the real big difference. Uh, with that said, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, there'll be some other videos, uh, maybe deep in, deep in <laughs> there'll be maybe some other videos uh, looking at it from another uh, direction or something. Other than that, there'll be a video on the screen maybe right now that either I've recommended to you or YouTube has recommended. Thanks very much for watching and uh, see you in the next video. Uh, ciao, ciao. Goodbye.